King Kong is one of the biggest milestones in movie history with its groundbreaking special effects and iconic story of man versus nature. With the release of Kong Skull Island being this week, I thought it would be best to look at the movie that started it all, as well as its 1976 and 2005 remakes. Now I know that there are other Kong movies out there, and we'll get to those eventually, but for now I just wanted to focus on these three versions, especially this one, which is my personal favorite out of all of them. And be aware, spoilers do lie ahead. The story for King Kong is that Carl Denham, played by Robert Armstrong, recruits Anne Darrow, played by Fay Ray, to act in a movie that he's filming. They go to an island called Skull Island to film this movie. They run into natives who eventually capture Anne and sacrifice her to King Kong. But Kong ends up protecting Anne from dinosaurs and other creatures on the island. All while Jack Driscoll, played by Bruce Cabot, leads a rescue mission to find Anne. Kong is eventually captured and brought to New York, where he eventually escapes and has one of the most famous climaxes in film history. The film ends with Kong dying and Denim saying the famous line, Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. King Kong himself. He still looks amazing in this movie. The special effects hold up really well for a movie that's being made in 1933. You have to remember that before this movie, the only kind of animation that people have seen like this was in the movie The Lost World, which had come out years before and was a silent picture. It was also animated by Willis O'Brien, the same man who animated King Kong. In the movie, Kong legitimately still feels like a giant. Despite the fact that the figure that they used to animate Kong was about the size of the figure I have here. They use stop motion animation to move him. Stop motion animation is the process of taking a picture and slightly moving the figure little by little to create the illusion of movement. A few minutes of footage could take hours to complete. There's a documentary that comes with a two-disc special edition of the 1933 version of King Kong where Peter Jackson, the director of the 2005 remake, recreates the Lost Spider Pit sequence with his crew using stop-motion animation, the exact same type that they used to animate the original King Kong movie. First, let me go into a little history here. The Spider Pit sequence was a scene in the original King Kong movie that was cut and has since then been lost. It is a highly sought-after scene along with other movies that are out there that unfortunately have been lost to history. Even this entire crew that recreated the spider pit sequence had a really hard time and admitted that it was a huge challenge to animate this scene. This really shows something how Willis O'Brien, all the way back in 1933, was able to pull off these groundbreaking special effects with such primitive filming equipment. Despite the fact that Kong and the rest of the creatures in the movie don't look as realistic as possible, it is still such a wonder to look at a lot more interesting to look at than many CGI monsters in movies these days. Ray Harryhausen had a line that I believe went like this. Stop motion is a way to capture the fantasy in a movie that you can't catch if you try to make it too real. And that really is one of the best parts about the special effects in King Kong, is that there's something in front of the camera, and there's a sense of wonder to how they were able to pull this off. The fact that they don't look as realistic as possible doesn't really bother you when you're still looking at the spectacle that is on screen. It really makes you think how they could have pulled this off back then in 1933. No computers, not anything like that. This figures the size of mine right here in a studio with men that are bringing monsters to life. Plus, we don't have the luxury of talking to Willis O'Brien or any of the other people that were involved in the movie anymore. Every person involved in the movie has unfortunately passed on. There was no documentaries made back then to tell you how they made it like there is nowadays. It was all very shrouded in mystery. Whether it was stop motion, acting in front of a projection screen, or actually projecting little pieces of the film of the live action actors into the background of the monsters, they pulled off some of the most groundbreaking special effects in a movie that have ever been done. Like I've said before about movies like Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, and many other movies, this is one of the movies that makes you want to make movies. What I would give to be in my grandpa's shoes all the way back in 1933 when the movie first came out when he first saw this movie.
It has inspired countless filmmakers with its groundbreaking special effects and amazing sound design. This film has paved the way for filmmakers like Ray Harryhausen, Steven Spielberg, Peter Jackson, George Lucas, and many others. It is a reason that I am pursuing film as a career. Many people I have met in school and other people always say that movies like The Godfather, Citizen Kane, Casablanca, and Star Wars are the most groundbreaking movies of all time. And while I love all of those movies and think that yes, they are some of the most groundbreaking movies of all time, to me they will never come close to the masterpiece that is King Kong. King Kong to me is the most groundbreaking and influential movie of all time. Guys, I just wanted to announce to you that I recently launched my own website since I am trying to market myself and get my name out there but when it comes to freelance writing, filmmaking, and even comic book work. I have recently launched my website. I put a link in for it in the description below. I have also launched another Facebook page which is more of kind of a public figure Facebook page. So be sure to check that out. Again, the link is in the description below along with all my other social medias. I have started doing live art broadcasts up on my Facebook page so join me for that. I'll be doing one probably at least once a week. Uh, I just started an Old Man Logan drawing the other day and I plan on finishing it this week. Um, be on the lookout because I will also be reviewing the other two King Kong movies, the 1976 version and the 2005 Peter Jackson version. I'm really looking forward to watching those again. And as always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The link is in the description below. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.